the Rugby Union, and I'm here with Murphy Walton and Jack Hi. Dean. How are we? Good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, great, thank you. I'm really looking forward to the match. Um, the first question, really, I want to put to you guys is um, what are we expecting from today? So, Jack, I'll go to you first. I think we're going to expect a very close, tight, physical affair. Um, it's two teams that you know are very uh, eager to win this game, especially Hallam hasn't, hasn't won the, the um, in 11 years. Uh, and for the uh, uni offside, they don't want to be a part of that side that after seven years of victory. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be very tense uh, and very physical. The weather's good for rugby uh, and we're expecting a lot of uh, open play and, uh, and quick ball. Great, and Murphy, wh what are you expecting from today? Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting probably a bit of a letdown, I hate to say, from the university side, just uni offside, sorry, just because the sheer experience that I've seen or has been, uh, I've heard through the grapevine that is on the Hallam, Hallam side, and I think they might just edge it this year. It was so close last year. And I think they might ha might just have the minerals this year to actually turn things around for them. But whether that gets them in the swing of things for the next couple of years, I don't know. I think it might go straight to the final. Uni off. Right, and uh, University of Sheffield have won the rugby union match for the last seven years in a row. You know, what sort of impact will that have? Will it have, you know, more pressure on each team, really? Well, I think for the uni off side, there's almost an extra... You know, there might not be ready for, for what Hallam are, are going to put to them today. Uh, and there might be also be a little bit of nerves for that uni offside um, because, like I said, they don't want to be a part of that team that loses. Uh, and it might look like the year th uh, this year because the Hallam side looked really strong. Again, that had a lot of the players for Hallam today played in that game last year where they lost by one point. They'll be very eager to uh, revenge that, that one point loss. And I'm sure they're going to come out come out the block swinging and, uh, and show very you know, physical start to the game. So... Uh, you know, Hallam will be right up for this because I think this, their forces are going to put their seven years of wrongs right just today. Yeah, and there's also two freshers in, in the match as well. Yeah. Today, so yeah. Um, I mean so I'm wondering, what, what would, the, what would go through in, go be going through the minds of some of those freshers in their first varsity match? Well, it's, it's just a worry that they might not have the, the, the impact on the team, that they, they, might not, they might not feel that they have a, a, the experience that can take them in this game. But it's the support that they have from the more experienced players in the side that will really keep them going and get them through. Because it is an atmosphere when the, uh, the Sheffield uh, University men's ones, they, when, they go, when they go to grasps at the uh, varsity, it, it, is a, it is a good atmosphere. So hopefully they'll have the minerals to keep going. We'll see. Yeah, that's right. It is, it is a good atmosphere here. Uh, and I also wanted to talk about the form, really. So go, go coming into the match, the, uh, sorry, Jack, Jack, can we, to, we just tell us more about the form? Yeah, so Hallam, Hallam are coming in with a... Uh, good form. They've won seven out of their ten uh, league games this year. Uh, that's despite a lot of injuries for a lot of their players. Um, Uniov, not so much. They've, they've struggled a bit this year. I think the second bottom in their league. Mm. Um, so they do. there's a very difference. There's a big difference in form going into this game. Um, you've seen players such as uh, Joel Gunn and, and Will Baker really perform well for, for the Hallam side this year. And it, it might suggest a, a quite an open, expansive backs play for them today. Um, and, and then there'll be the other side of the spectrum is, is uni off some of their best performers this year have been in that forward pack so uh, there might be a sort of contrast in, in play styles in terms of uh, uni off might be a bit more physical a bit more pack focus where, where Hallam might be looking to exploit the exploit the wings and and, the back and their backs play great and, and you know th if there's one player that we're going to look out from for the University of Sheffield side who would who'd be your pick um, it would be Cam Dunn really he's their captain and he's their top point scorer uh, beneath him is Ben Buckworth uh, with the second most amount of points, but definitely Cam Dunn. He'll be leading the charge tonight, and he'll definitely, definitely be one to watch. Great. Uh, do you know what? There's something quite, quite strange, isn't it, with uh, forwards being the top try scorers yeah. in the team? Yeah, you yes. know, um, wh why do you think that is? Well, I think having a, a hooker as your top try scorer might suggest a lot of, a lot of mauling. You know, kind of doing the line out, getting on the back of the maul, and, and being the kind of the, the person to finish off the maul. Uh, and like I said, it, it probably does suggest that they're quite physical, they're quite compact, and they're a very good and very organised uh, forward side. Um, and it, it's going to be a complete contrast, I think, of play styles today. And it'll be really interesting to see who comes out on top. Great. And then, you know, one player to look out for, I think, for uh, the Hallam side is, is Joel Gunn. He, he's a top top try scorer. And, you know, would, would you agree? Is he, is he someone that people, people should be watching today? Yeah, no, Joel Gunn is definitely someone to look out for. Uh, again, someone to finish off the tries out on the wing. Uh, and also Will Baker, their fly half, uh, touted by a lot of people we've spoken to in the lead-up to this as one of their best players. And he really looks to uh, dictate the game from, from the 10 position. So yeah, great. And, you know, today, I think, I think the sun's gone in a bit now. 
Yeah. But I don't, I, what, what would that be like for the players? You know, w- would the weather really play much of a part today? I'm sure. It, I'm sure it wouldn't. I'm sure they're all really excited. But what's the sort of perfect conditions for the rubber match? Well, I mean, the gusts, the gusts of winds that we have here won't do any favours for either side, especially when they're kicking. But the sun just gone away. It might help. Sun's in people's eyes and stuff. But uh, I think it, ideal weather is right now. I mean, we wouldn't mind if the ground was a little bit softer because it's uh, we've had quite a bit of quite a bit of rain, which will help. But uh, yeah, it's perfect perfect season for it. It will also be good for the uni off side, if especially if they like to focus with the pack. I'm sure a lot of that that sort of scrummage team doesn't want to be running out in the sun for 80 minutes. So the cooler the weather, I think the better for them. Uh, and the wind might affect the the Sheffield Hallam side if you know if they're looking to play a bit more expansively and uh, and you know have uh, some aggressive kicking. The wind might play a big big part in their game today. Yeah, I think you know we, we can see them getting ready to start just there yeah. a- outside the door. But um, yeah, f- finally, w- what part would experience play in this game today? Well, it's just about not being complacent. And f- after winning for seven years on, on the trot, you don't want to be complacent. You don't want to let yourselves go or lose touch of the game or even just manage your control and play it the way you want to play. So if, uh, if Uniov decide to be a little bit more complacent, I feel like Sheffield Hallam will really run away with it. And what, what are we thinking score-wise? So we're going to come back at half-time and... Uh, at half time, what do you think the score might be? Well, I hate to say it as a as a uni of uh, student, but I think this probably could be the year, could be the yeah. year that Hallam take the victory. Thanks so much, and um, we're going back to the we're, go- we're coming over to our commentators. Thanks for watching. Bye. Good afternoon and welcome to Hallam Sports Park. We're just underway here at. Um, in Sheffield, early penalty for Hallam, kicked to a corner. They just make touch, but it's kept in. And kicked clear by Uni. Hallam will start a counter attack here. Baker inside. Uni over the ball. Referee says no. Baker again. Over the top, Napier will come across and claims it for the mark. Mary, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ollie. How are you? You okay? Good, thank you. And you? Good, yeah. I'm looking forward to this, actually. Really excited to see this game today. Kick clear by Uni to Baker. Wind holds the ball up in the air. It's anyone's ball, oh. and it's claimed by Hallam. And there's men over here. Hallam are through, inside, and it's a try, early try. James Norman goes over. Very early score That's for score. Hallam. It's a good move. The wind just held that ball up in the air. Mm. Claimed by Norman initially. Passed out into the midfield, and Norman... Picks up the pieces and dives over, and it's an early score. It's only a handful of minutes in. <laughs> Can't help but think that the uni probably lack of men over on that far right hand side, lack of defenders, <laughs> and Baker will line up his conversion. See how the wind affects this. There is a wind going from right to left as we look at it. around the ground this is time steps up oh. off the post so it stays 5-0 but a very early and good start for Hallam line out of the game then. Sam Dunn, the uni of captain, will take it. Deliberation at the line out to see who is jumping where. And 
to go to the front, Buckworth takes and it's to the back, Don will look to collect and does. It's spun round though, Hallam have done well to defend that initially, but then there's a shove on from Uni. And they're still going here, Uni off, that's a strong maul. And there's an advantage from the referee as Rogan goes forward for Hallam, uh, for Uni off, sorry. Slow ball out the back of the rook and Napier cross kick. Oh! <laughs> nearly taken on the far side. The referee will come back for the penalty advantage. In at the side, says the referee, and we'll see where they go. They go into the corner again. Strong and positive maul early on from Uni. Napier kicks comfortably to the corner. Fast start here for both teams. <laughs> Rowdy crowd as the rain starts to fall. Ooh. That'll make it interesting. That makes it even more English. <laughs> Change at the line out as they go to Flinders. And Uni have the shove on again. Slow ball again. Alan have done well there actually. Very slow. They pick and go from the mall stroke rook. Alan are doing well to slow it down here. They think they're over. Try. Try for uni. Who is it at the pile of the bottom of the bodies? It's Tom Elphick. <laughs> the prop with the score by the looks of things. And what a fast start we have here at Hallam Sports Park. Just as the rain starts to somewhat fall. Bosworth to take the conversion for the extra two and to take Uni into the lead. A bit easier for him, sticking with the wind. Mm. And he adds the extra two. Uni lead by two points. What do you make of that so far, Mary? It's really intense and it starts in really strong. I'm excited for the rest of the game. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, no, if it, if it carries on like this, we could be in for a great game again. I know last year was a very close game by one point. So we'll early signs, but it's uh, shaping up to be the same. Exactly. Oh. Uni deal with the Rook. Leopard charges in and a penalty for the Uni. I think there was a no arms tackle. Tucked shoulder is what the referee says. And Uni, 15 or so metres inside their own half, will look to clear downfield again with the win. Yeah, it's a nice kick actually from Napier. I'll get them just inside the Hallam half. Stolen by Hallam. Collected comfortably under no real pressure. Fisher spins it out to the back row and that's a high tackle. Flinders are judged with a shoulder around the neck there in contact. And now the sun's out. How about that? Rain one minute, sun the next. Good clearance from Baker, just down in front of us here. Oh, 
I see like even the weather wants to be really intense yeah. today. <laughs> Patrick licensed the number three will line up to take this throw for Hallam. The three wants a word first. Closing the gap a little bit. First Hallam line out. Ooh. Successful, looks a bit unstraight, but they carry on. That's a massive wow. tackle in the midfield. Huge tackle and a huge result. That was impressive. Turnover for Uni. That was a massive, massive tackle by Ted Ferris. And a nice turnover as well in the midfield. And Napier gets Hallam, uh, Uniov back down into the Hallam half, just outside the Hallam 22. the sun stays out. I don't want any more rain. <laughs> <laughs> Look to go to the front again. Bit of movement in the line out there from the Uniov. Oh. It's oh. not claimed. Bit of miscommunication and the referee calls a knock on. So we'll have the first scrum of the game. This I'm looking forward to. Ooh, I'm excited. Put in. Here we go then. First shove on. It's collapsed at the front and a penalty to Hallam. Collapsing. Prop Tom Elphick, the try scorer, penalised. And a chance for Hallam to get back up towards halfway. Since again, one from one in the line out. Can he have success again? Shape to go to the front. A mistake there. And what's the referee going to call? Hold your gap. Uh, Union penalised for closing the gap, I believe. We'll go again. We'll go to the middle and it's stolen by Uni, somewhat of a chance to count it here as they run Ooh. through the midfield with nice tackle. Recycled ball for Lawson to work with Ooh. and it's dropped. So another scrum. It's unfortunate there, Buckwith with the initial steal of the ball in the line out and then recycled nicely by Uni and unfortunately just a bit too low for him in the scrum half. Second scrum, referee telling Elphick just to keep his height after the first scrum and re collapse. Sun has gone behind the clouds again and there's a gloom over the Hallam Sports Park. Shove on from Uni and the penalty to the Uni of the decision from the referee not driving straight is what I get from his hand signals. And that's one success for Hallam Uni and one success for Uni of in terms of scrums. And Napier with a really nice Ooh, kick just inside the 
Hallam 22, and they'll look to go again. Collected by Leopard and Junior with a shove on here. Mm. Into the 22 they go. Dunn still looking for the ball at the back. He's having his shirt pulled, but he's still got it. And Uni are still going forwards. About 12 metres away now. And they're still going done with it now. Lawson's looking to seal it off him. Penalty for the Uni. But they're still going. <laughs> Eventually it's brought down. And there's a pick oh, and go oh. from Flinders. Five metres out. And another pick oh. and go. And it's a try. Ooh. Second try. I think that might be Ted Ferris. He's managed to get over the whitewash for the uni of. It seems like they're really motivated to not let Hallam win. Yeah. They might prove yeah, us wrong. Ted Ferris, I was right. What a guess from yeah. all this distance away. <laughs> Calculated guess. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice move, actually, from the uni. That mall looks really strong. They seem like they found their rhythm in this yeah. game. Bit of a slow start and a bit of a shock, I think, for them. They had to find their rhythm quickly. And a chance now for Boswick to put them further into the lead, which he does coolly and comfortably. Really nice. Two impressive kicks, albeit with the wind, but. After a slow start, the Uni of Sheffield have really got into their groove. That driving ball looks a real threat. <laughs> Restart held up in the oh. wind. That's really well taken. That was really good. Really well taken by James Norman. And license the prop into the midfield. Glorious Sheffield. Jameson spread out wide by Fisher. And that's a solid tackle by Napier there for Uniov. Recycled nicely by Hallam. Fisher to his forwards. Uniov defending well so far. Getting up to meet them. Nice tackle there by Flinders. Men over here for Hallam. Oh, struck forward on the far side, and Uniov will have the scrum. But a nice bit of possession for Hallam. I think after a bit of toing and froing when it comes to kicking, I think that's you know welcome to see, certainly as a spectator, and I think for the players as well. So, packing down for the next scrum. Ominous looking cloud over our right hand side. 
third scrum of the game. Put in by Lawson. Back comfortably. Buckworth has it at the back. Lawson on the ball. It's stolen by Fisher. And Hallam have it back here. It's worked nicely. Baker. Through he goes, through a gap. Really nicely done. He's got support. Oh. He's got some really nice support. Fisher could go all the way. Held up two meters short. They recycle it. There's a chance. Can he get over? He does. Score for Hallam. Joe Fitzsimmons dots over for Sheffield Hallam. That's a really nice move. Started by their captain, nearly finished by their scrum half, but in the end, Joe Fitzsimmons dots over the line. Fantastic for Sheffield Hallam. And they've got a chance to go just a couple points behind the Uni of Sheffield. Baker, eyes up the posts with those grey clouds looming over. Stutter to run up and slots through the posts. Really assured this time around from the fly half. And Hallam go just two points behind the University of Sheffield. Are you getting <coughs> Restart. With the wind, Baker collects and kicks upfield. It'll bounce just in front of Buckworth, but nicely for him. And there's a charge on. He's collides into several Hallam defenders. Lawson recycles to Dunn. He's met by Santa Maria. And Lawson with the ball again at the back. To Ted Ferris. Lawson. Leopard. To Lawson. To Rogan. And spun wide and all just dropped on that far right hand side by Charlie Coombe. It's a nice chance, nice move again from Hallam, actually. And it'll be a scrum down for Sheffield Hallam. You're not, you're not on, oh. basically. You're right. Scrum down for Hallam, just on that our touchline. The referee will be keeping an eagle eye on the tight head side closest to him. A couple of collapses on up from either side so far. It's fed in and just scraped back by Hallam Uni, but I think the Uni off have it back and they've got a penalty. They have a penalty. I think that's given for losing the bind. Punishment for Hallam. And another chance for the Uni to get deep into Hallam territory here. Which is unsuccessful. Oh no, it's not. No, that's a fantastic kick. Misjudged by the Hallam fullback. James Norman watched it go over his head and another chance for Sheffield University here.
done again for take. To the middle and to Leopard and it's brought down by Uni. Spun out wide to Rogan. He's brought down, captured in the midfield. Lawson spins it wide. And it's a chip in behind. Geraghty could be in here. Ooh. Well marshaled by Norman, but the referee will come back for the penalty. Interesting that the uni of choose for the scrum. Be interesting to see the outcome of said scrum. As they pack down once again. Last start from both teams. Equal game. Cycled by Uni in the scrum. And Lawson under pressure. Just about keeps a hold of it. Ferris now. Uni keep it just despite shouts from the crowd and Rogan. Nice tackle in the midfield. They'll go to the left. Flinders. In he goes. Supported by his teammates, Lawson to Leopard. Two second rows in consecutive phases. I think there's a knock on there. The referee's coming back for a penalty advantage. A knock on advantage, sorry. It's quietened down a little bit, maybe. But the game, but. Yeah. Still. make of the last sort of 10 minutes or so? Excuse me. What do you make of the last 10 minutes? Sorry. I think we went like on a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. It went from really intense to, oops, a bit quieter, but now we're all odd. It's starting to pick up in intensity again. Yeah. I genuinely don't know what to expect from that game anymore. <laughs> so another uni put in. Oh. Oh. Spill straight out of the back, Napier. Dummies with Lakeman Brown and finds Rogan. Lawson to Buckworth. Big collision in the midfield. Over Napier's head, tackle off the ball, and there's a knock on. Nice defending, nice defensive set from Alan there, actually. That'll be a Sheffield Hallam University put in. Looks as though Ben Ross is going to be coming onto the field, substitute number 16 there. Ben to see a shot. Oh, the prop Harry O'Brien will comes off. So Ross goes to tight head. Elphick still on the left hand side in the uni scrum. Gunn, the captain. Still in the centre. The rest remains unchanged. As Fisher puts the ball in straight down, and the referee will call for a reset. It's interesting to see how Hallam cope with this scrum. They've struggled under some scrum pressure in previous contests. This is an important scrum for them to win. About 15 metres out from their own try line. Referee call 
is the set. Initial shove from Uni. If he keeps the whistle close to his mouth. <coughs> Eventually, Alan get it clear. And Fisher will take his time with the box kick. Looks for touch and finds it successfully. Nice kick. Nice clearance. Callum did well there with that scrum. Competed well. Managed to negotiate the pressure from the uni off back row. Sheffield University remain in the Hallam half. Just on the 10 metre line. It's brought down by Uniov, but they'll keep rumbling on. Ferris goes forward and is eventually supported, and there's a penalty. Not rolling away, says the referee. And they go quickly. And there's a knock on from the quick tap and go. Bit of a wasted opportunity there for Uni. Alan. Should the scrum be a success, we'll get that reprieve. Feels like we're stuck in the zone. <laughs> Sorry? Feels, uh, feels like we're stuck in one particular place now. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of action, especially in the last 10 or 15 minutes in that Hallam half. Mm. So Uni's putting their second try as almost seems as, a break as though it was a breakaway try, and as, it, as it turns out. They've, sh they've shown they've got it in them. Disruption at the scrum referee isn't happy, so calls for <coughs> reset. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a, a silent hush around the ground. That grey cloud looks as though it's going to miss us. Luckily, it looks ominous over in the far direction. Anyway, back to the rugby. It's a pick and go at the back. Finds Fisher on the blind side. Alan do well. Santa Maria. Into contact. Fisher digs through legs and bodies with the box kick. Up it goes towards Uni of number nine Lawson and it's lost forward. Oh no, it's a penalty. Knock on, says the referee, but then recollected from an offside player. to beat the ball upfield. Into the, a crowd of loyal supporters. Licence again with the line out for Hallam. Speaks to Jameson. Pre-planned call. Into the middle they go. Flinders up for Uniov and claims it. Lawson back to Napier, <coughs> to Ferris. And along the line they go. Licence now to Rogan. Across once more to Lakeman Brown, who does well and makes good ground back inside to his centre partner, who then loses it forward. is going to be coming on at fullback. <laughs> so Lawson goes off and Napier goes to scrum half. And then Bosworth slots in to fly half. Bit of flexibility from Uniov <coughs> in terms of positioning. Referee 
stays on the near side to watch this scrum. Recycled by Hallam and there's a penalty. A Hallam penalty not driving straight, says the referee. Baker to go for touch again. Makes nice ground actually. Given the conditions. Again, a quick over throw. They go to the middle with success. Brought down by Uni, and there's an advantage being played by the referee, Fisher, into his <coughs> midfield. Solid collision. Well met. Turnover brings that attacking phase to a close, but the referee comes back bringing them all down, says the referee, and they tap and go quickly, oh and that's a knock on, the tap and go from Archie Crapper did not quite go to plan, and Uni with another solid defensive set, will look to navigate their way out of danger, outside their own pick and go, he's on his own, unisolated. Rappers over the top. Has not managed to get it, but there's a knock on by Uniov in the rook. And another Hallam put in, a few handling errors creeping in there. conversation with his captain and Norman as well eyeing up who they're going to attack and where big shot from Uniov Rapper finds Fisher. He's lost their scrum half. Uh, an acting scrum half as Hancock takes it in. Fisher back again. But Simmons this time. <coughs> Fisher to Baker. Crossfield kick. And that's a big hit. Uniov have stolen it back with another knock on. Crossfield kick was well claimed by Brad Mulholland. A nice hit from Uniov's Will Noakes. He entered the field and proved it. <laughs> it's just come on the field, yeah. Again from 
sensation that is Coach Posa. Coaches on the field. A little deliberation here as to what's going on. Man down for Uniog. Water as well. Impressive first half. Yeah. I can understand what happens on the field right now. <laughs> well, the public is here, and it's nice to hear. Yeah, plenty of chanting and <laughs> cheering for the, their respective teams. Sorted. Napier looks okay and will carry on. Slots back into his scrum half position. Fisher. Oh, nice yeah. move. And nice hands. Baker spins it out wide to the far wing. For Gerald Gunn, the top try scorer for Hallam Uni. And he side his way through. Oh. Brought down just by Buckwith. Five metres out here. Fisher. Hallam into a crowd of bodies, but they recycle and they pick and go. And he's held short. But get the ball defending. back. There's a pick and go again. They're over the line. They need to try and get it down. Held up, says the referee. <laughs> Held up. Impressive defence from the Uni of Sheffield. They reacted just on time. <laughs> and that, I believe, is half time. Referee has blown. So we'll swap sides and we'll be back. But first we'll listen to the boys in the studio. Okay then. It's half time, Callum. <laughs> uh, no, no they can see the pen, I think. Yeah. So what's that, 12 14? Yeah. yeah, I've got 12 14. Hello, can you hear me?
take the Hallam off to a really quick port, you know, they're, they're probably uh, going to probably run away with it. It was, it was very surprising how quickly they scored, but uh, Uniov did very well to kind of settle into the game and, and got their tries back and, and got themselves back into the lead. And they've really dominated territory in that game, or in that first half. Uh, probably thanks to the win, but also their pack, very dominant in the scrums, in the moves, in the lineouts. Um, so it is a very interesting first half. And uh, it's uh, interesting to see uh, Uniov be so successful with their pack play being very physical. Uh, and whenever the ball goes out wide due to the wind, there was a lot of handling issues, uh, which you kind of said at the beginning of the game. So it will be interesting to see how it plays out in the second. And Murphy, I'm just wondering what, what you thought to that first half as well. Yeah, basically, Uniov were really lapping up the scrums and the moves. They were enjoying the lineouts that they received from this play in the first half. And Hallam, they got a good foot in and they've kept themselves in the game nicely by only two points out at the moment. But it's just a, wonder, a, uh, a worry whether the, the wind will play an impact because we're going downwind this time, which might actually help Hallam's uh, expansive play. I think, you know, wh whilst we were looking, we, we were saying about, you know, the difference between the backs of each side and the, the difference between the forwards of each side. So what's been University of Sheffield's, um, you know, what have they been doing well? Well, the, they've been winning all the uh, the contact areas, they've been winning the rucks, they've been winning the malls and the line outs, and it really puts a good sort of foundation on their forward attacking play. Uh, you know, winning the penalties at the at the, uh, at the scrums and at the uh, at the rocks gives them the opportunity to kick kick the touch, uh, and then focus on their line out, which we we mentioned before the game. But they must be so strong because their hooker is so successful with his sky uh, um, his uh, try scoring. Um, and then we we also see when they try and be a bit more expansive, there's a lot of handling er handling errors uh, from both sides, um, which is very interesting to see. But it is it is kind of Hallam's game uh, the second half with the wind with obviously their 10 being one of their best players and see how he uh, looks to control the game with his kicking and uh, yeah, it should be a very interesting second half. Great, and, and Murphy, I'm, I'm going to ask you the same, same question, but for Hallam, what, what do they do well? So Hallam have done really well on getting the ball outside to their quicker wingers and really travelling down those wings past the uni of defence, but it's, it's really what they've done well is actually breaking down uh, the University of Sheffield defensive uh, back line is because sometimes they just can't keep up with the ball. Although um, when it does come to the scrums, Uniov have been completely on top. And uh, especially the malls and the lineouts, that's somewhere where Hallam hopefully in this half will close down or sort of uh, come out on top, hopefully. So you think that you know the backs have been the ones that have been making the, they've been making the lines, lines through and they've been breaking that defence and that's, that's yeah. really where Hallam's been doing well. Um, but w what about where, where can you know where can Hallam improve then? Well, I think that they'll get a lot of help with the wind. Um, I think they should take a lot of confidence of only being two points behind with their with Unios territory uh, and uh, with the wind for them. So they can take take a lot of confidence out of that. And then I think you can expect then the backs to really play their part in the second half and and make their mark on the game. Uh, and I, I think if you're a either side, I, I, I would put my head out there, put my neck out there, I should say, and uh, I think Hallam will probably be quite pleased with that first half and be quite confident going, uh, confident going into the second. Yeah, they could definitely, you know, win this game. It's, it's, it's in the balance, but, you know, for any of our viewers at home that can't, can't see the wind or can't feel the wind, what it is, you've got the wind coming from this direction and, it, and it's so fierce. It's, it's typical April weather, really. <laughs> yeah, um, especially in Sheffield. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's so windy out there today. Um, but what, what can Uniov do today to, to improve? Well, Uniov shouldn't be disheartened by the performance. They've done really well and they're absolutely dominating the scrums and the mauls and even their second try came from that maul early on in the game. But it's, it's just what they should do is just focus on being more uh, defensively minded when closing down the wings of that Hallam, especially with the wind. They want to be more speedy, more technical. And I think that's where they can improve uh, attacking-wise as well, is being just a bit more technical. Yeah, so... That's, that's it from us for the moment. We're going to be going down to Jed Pemberthy, who's down with the crowd. Thank you, Callum. It has been a wonderful atmosphere here in Leeds. That was a really nice one. over by the back. For a little bit more impetus going forward. For uni of the reaction from our left has been quite positive, as you can imagine. They are winning this game, and they have looked stronger in the packs as well, and that's been the, the, the key message from the University of Sheffield fans. They look stronger in the scrums, and honestly, when it comes to the turnover, it looks like University of Sheffield are doing much better in that regard. Otherwise, the atmosphere here has been brilliant. The sun has finally, mercifully, came out in this second half, but at the moment, University of Sheffield
Road are on top. Back to you in the studio, guys. So, thanks, Jed. So, um, we'd, we'd just like to talk about again with the wind. So, you know, some of the handling, er hand some of the handling errors there. You know, is that is that down to the wind? And yeah, what what, what can both teams do? Because both teams had handling errors at half. I think if I was a player, I'd definitely blame my handling errors on the wind. To be honest with you, but. Um, uh, I think it's, it's just something that the sides are definitely going to have to take into account. You've seen a few missed passes, a few sort of looping passes, and that's that's not going to be uh, any good in this win. So they've really be conscious about that uh, and maybe bit, be a bit more smart with their territory, uh, especially if it's a close game. You don't want to be playing in your own half in the second half if it's you know one 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 score game. So it should be all about the kicking, all about territory. And, and if you're the union offside, you want to be winding this da game down, going slow as possible, and really dominating the breakdown. Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's such a tight game, this. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and with, with it being a tight game, that, that means that this second half is going to be huge. And we've, we've got, you know, a point or two within this. What's that going to feel like for the players? Well, yeah, they can definitely be a bit startled, not only by the crowd, but also the point difference being only two in it. But, um, yeah, it's just when the players are finding themselves out on the wing, they, it's you're more singled out as a player, whereas if you're in the mall or in your scrum or rucking over or something, you've got the whole team behind you. Whereas if you're passing out and you're passing out to the to the wingers and it's just that one guy who just lets it lets the ball slide, it's just a horrible feeling. But hopefully Uniov can turn their turn their luck around and actually get going. Well, and also I just want to quickly mention if if the game is still tight uh, with you know a few minutes to go, if you're one of the inexperienced players for that, especially for that Uniov side, and you know the game's going on going to a knife edge, you don't then want to be the making mistake, be the one making the mistake. Exactly. That can uh, can ruin their their seven year record. So it will be going to be a very tense game if it stays this close uh, with you know ten minutes to go. Do you think for that reason, you know, if if they've got a f one of those freshers on that haven't had the experience and is feeling perhaps you know natural nerves really with this game, would would the coach be looking to make some substitutions towards the end of the, end of the half just to just to ease that a bit for some of the players, or or is that just part of the game where they have to put up with it, they have to go through the pressure? Well, I think the coaches be has to be very conscious about who he has on the pitch Definitely. in those final moments and, and who who is likely to perform under the pressure. Um, and I think, it's again, it's very important that the players aren't worried about making mistakes. They've got to play their natural game because when you worry about making mistakes, you tend to make mistakes. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see how people perform. Great. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, we're going back to our commentators with, uh, with everything else now. Welcome back. To Hallam Sports Park back out for the second half um, and if it's anything like the first we're in for a cracking second half of rugby second 40 Will Baker to get us back underway as Hallam now kicks from right to left as we look Blows his whistle arm in the air. And an army of maroon chase after that ball. Which is collected by Jamie Leffert under pressure from James Norman for O'Hallam. Spun wide by Napier to the captain, Dunn. Recycled. And a chance in the midfield to Lakeman Brown, but he's offside. Uh, sorry, it's forward pass. There'll be a scrum down to Hallam early on in this second half. A chance to see if they've taken any learnings from Sheffield Uni's scrum dominance. Looks as though the front rows are the same. No changes at half time from what I can see. Kept at the back nicely by Crapper. Oh. Nice Recycled though by Norman to Baker. Jameson into contact. And a penalty to Sheffield Uni. 
Holding on on the ground, Jameson. It's Hooker against Hooker. Dunn comes out on top. For Sheffield Uni and Napier with a chance to kick clear. Which he slices. It's not gone far at all, really. Microphone seem to and to delay. Looks like he saw it. Yep. Come to take the throw, then Sheffield Uni. There we go. To the front to Buckwith. It's stolen. But then a penalty for jumping across at the line out. Saul Jeffries is the Callum player penalised for jumping across. Maybe it has a bit more success oh. as it nearly hits our camera. finds Buckwith. Selected by Leopard. Linders joins with a big shove. Static for the time being, the mall brought down by Hallam. Linders peels off on the blind side. He's held well and Jameson over the top of the ball. Off his feet so leaves it alone. Leopard. Napier fizzes the ball out to Bosworth and Ferris into contact. Rogan, Bosworth, nice loop around. Lakeman Brown, Bosworth again at the back of the hand that time. And there's a surge over the ball and Hallam have it back. Fisher kicks. Uni recollect. Norman stops Noakes in his tracks. Napier. Ferris. Comes <coughs> to the short side. Uni go. They look to set up for their first box kick here, Uni. Napier yeah. sends it up into the sky and really well taken by James Norman. There's a quick tap and go penalty here which the referee brings back. And Hallam are going to go for goal. They're going to go for the three points which would take them into the lead. Fancies his chances confident with this. And lays it up carefully. Towards the goal. Stuckers kicks it low with the wind and slots the three points to take Hallam into the lead. Two converted tries for Uni. 
and they find another comparable kick as it turns out for Will Baker. Napier, the scrum half, restarts for Harlem. Norman floats it to Fitzsimmons, who breaks the first tackle. Finds support from his centres. Crapper now. Had Fisher there. Chose not to use him. And there's a turnover from Flinders. Chose to release the ball. Probably the right decision. Baker into the open backfield. Noakes will come across. Steps his way through. And dummies with the out of the bang backhand offload. Found himself in trouble. Napier to O'Brien. The slow recycled ball here. Napier with the box kick. Doesn't make much ground. Baker steps. And bounces Lakeman Brown. And a penalty for Hallam. Referee penalises Flinders. And Hallam with a solid chance now to extend their lead if they go for the three points. I think that's a wise decision, Mary. I would say it's, it's an interesting one. <laughs> I'm really excited because nothing goes as I as I thought it would. Every time I turn my head back to the game, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> where is it going now? How about you? What do you think about it? I think that's that's the beauty of the sport is that there's never a dull moment. There's always, especially this game, there's been things happening every minute. Impressive performance from both teams. Baker slots that as well. And the University of Sheffield on the back foot as Hallam extend their lead. Start under the wind, so just goes beyond the tent. Well taken, but there's an offside or there's crossing, and we have a decision <coughs> from the referee of a penalty to the University of Sheffield and a chance to claw it straight back. We'll go for the corner, not opted for the tee as of yet. Touch is just found despite Norman's best efforts over there on the far side. <laughs> Done to Buckwith again, a popular choice. He drops it down for Leopard. on and it's driving black and yellow shirts swarm the back of the mall it's brought down eventually and it's a turnover Sheffield Hallam University have done fantastically well there in particular Santa Maria and cleared up the field by Will Baker Evan Hancock exchanges sword gestures. Another uni line out. Well, 
found again by Dunn to Flinders this time. <laughs> Ferris barges his way beyond halfway. Shepard sees off Napier and goes forward nicely. Napier at the back to Rogan. Bosworth, Lakeman, Brown, and along the line. And Charlie Coon finds himself isolated on the wing and drawn into touch by Hallam defenders. with the throw now that license is off finds with Simmons but it's not straight says the referee we had a perfect view of that and that looked alright compared to some of them As announced by the crowd. <laughs> Perfect view of the scrum for our map from our angle here. And it's fed by Napier. That's a solid scrum. It's not gone anywhere. Bosworth, Lakeman, Brown, and oh. through they go. Noakes, no. Rogan chips ahead. This could be fantastic. He's taken off the ball, and it's a penalty try. <laughs> penalty try, a tackle off the ball. And it was almost certain that that was going to be dotted down. That was impressive. And a yellow card shown by the referee. Tackle off the ball. Tom Rogan did fantastically well. As James Norman sees yellow. Yeah, Rogan did fantastically well there to chip a head off the out of the back handed um, offload. Then he off saw the opportunity and took it. Yeah, saw the opportunity, tackled off the ball by James Norman. And that's an automatic seven points to the University of Sheffield. Send it deep with the wind. License does very well on the far side to claim it under pressure. Flinders into contact. Met well. Slow ball. License drives <coughs> forward beyond the gain line. Ferris this time. Napier opts for the box kick again. Goes flat and it bounces out, dribbles out for a Hallam line out. Mary, what did you make of that try for uni? Good try, were you impressed with that try? Um, um I'm really impressed. I think it's one of the first times I'm seeing the first team play. And it's a pleasure to see both teams are giving as much effort as they can. And it's just making the game really intense and interesting. Matches the occasion as well, doesn't it? Big yeah. occasion, big varsity contest. Varsity makes every con like competition just different. Not straight again, deems the referee. Seems like it's going to be a tight game again. Could go right down to the wire.
Scrum penalty. First of the second half. Losing his bind. Not driving straight. And that pressure in the front row is really becoming a problem for Hallam University to deal with. As he does his best with the kick. And another line out just inside the Hallam half. line for Hallam that uh, for Uni of sorry with robustness in the middle of the park as many of them tarry hard and go forward and break the gain line up his target. Buckworth at the front this time. Bosworth to Ali License who loses it. It goes forwards, deems the referee and that's the yellow uh, and that is a scrum down. Another scrum. I'd love to know the scrum stats. There's been a few handling errors. If you manage to get them at the end that could be really interesting. Yeah it would be interesting. Big scrum this in the context of the game. Hallam to feed in with Fisher. It's solid. Rafa keeps it at the back. Baker sees a bit of space. It's recollected and there's a chance of a counter. Through Go Uni, still going. Great run by Charlie Coombe. And a penalty for all of his efforts. Penalty for Charlie Coombe's efforts. Great run. Great collect from Baker's kick. And a mini counter attack reaps rewards for the University of Sheffield. But Napier's kick is a poor one. Straight to Baker, who has time to eye up Bosworth. And collects. He'll run it back. Evades. Baker's challenge. He's still going, Bosworth. Over halfway. <laughs> Rogan, as first receiver. Lakeman Brown to Garrity for the first time in this match. On the ball. Bit of space to run into. He's met. License goes forwards. Playing the nine says the referee Elliot Fisher, 9 versus 9 there, Elliot Fisher deemed to play the 9 and a word from the referee to the captain Will Baker is telling his players just to keep their discipline Which is found. Tom Herdman joins us on the pitch. Patrick Lysons also returns for Sheffield Hallam Uni. There's the yellow card. And James Norman, watch on. Jameson. One of the substitutes, the hooker. Jamie Pugh, unbeaten in his first student fight night, the first year also withdraws from the field. As Rafa wins it back for Hallam Uni, head back to the captain who kicks long into lots of open space.
notes. Collect, chips forward. Straight to the scrum half, Fisher. And that's a big challenge. <laughs> and a penalty for Hallam Uni. Charlie Flinders has been penalised. Baker is going to go for goal from just inside his own half. This would be a big kick. Referee having a word with his assistant. Not sure what they've got out, actually. for a water break there. Important given the physicality of this game. Referee wants a word. Cardbrook out, and it's a Ooh. red card. Charlie Flinders has been sent off. A straight red card. Must have been an incident from the previous rook. <coughs> On a straight red card, Charlie Flinders, his game is done. Sheffield University. Down to 14 men for the remainder of the game. Big kick. Baker ties it up. 55 meters. Goes for it. It's well short. Guaranteed can counter on that far left hand side. Ben Guaranteed's going. And that looked a high tackle, but he was falling. Big tackle coming in on the Sheffield Uni winger. The play resumes. And he gets back up to his feet. Lysons tips it on for Dunn, who's met by Patrick Lysons for Sheffield Hallam. Kicks. Kicks high. Baker misses it. And there's a chance of a counter on that far side. It's a great tackle into touch by Gregor Napier there. Otherwise, Brad Mulholland looked to be in. Jacob Brown enters the pitch for Sheffield Uni. James Norman returns to the field following his yellow card. So for a stage it was 14 against 14. Now it's 15 against 14 in favor of Sheffield Hallam University. Good decision from the referee. Go to the back and it's over the top and Elliot Fisher for Hallam. All the way to the back it goes. Hallam with a big chance now. They could go from the rook. Player down for Uni. It's a big tackle by Ali License. Baker with support. Goes to Cooper. But passes on once more. And it's a try for Hallam. Big score, Louis Redfern, I think it is, who dots over for Sheffield Hallam Uni. The referee's going to have a conversation with his assistant.
forward pass. Say, says the referee as the rain starts to fall again. Horrible drizzle just falling. Forward pass and that try is ruled out. Could be big when it comes to full time that decision. Here comes on. We'll see to somebody. Can't help but think what happened to draw that red card from the referee's pocket. Big in the context of varsity. Big in the context of this game. Even he's still leading. Seems like one of the uni of players has a little injury Down issue. Injured, yeah. Got the stoppages. Oh, uh, and the rain is back again. <laughs> the rain is back again. Looks a bit more set in as well. There's a big grey cloud over to our right hand side. The wind is kind of blowing in our direction as, as <laughs> well, so <laughs> yeah. can only mean one thing. suddenly drop when it has become icy cold here at Hallam Sports Park. Supporters are staying strong. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the decision from the referee. Uni have it. Elphick goes into contact. And a penalty to Uni. And I think... Uniov will just slow it down slightly. Bit of cramp for one of the Uniov players. Elphick has had a good game. Well, he scored the first try, of course, for Uni. Clear downfield and touch is found. But still, Hallam have a chance here. Well inside the Union of half. Just outside the 22. Dunn looks for Buckworth. Finds him nicely. And they get the mall on. Union of Sheffield. License joins at the back. Napier waits for the ball. And there's a decision from the referee. I think that's because license didn't enter to the back entered through the side and the referee spotted it and it's a scrum to Hallam just outside the uni of 22 as the rain pours down now wow it's actually hail <laughs> well i wouldn't want to be on a camera We will need these stats. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. Stoppage in play for a bit more cramp. Just shows the level of intensity of these two teams and their players. 30 players giving their all for this varsity victory. It would be Sheffield Uni's eighth in a row. 
was last year's tightly contested fixture. Almost a reflection of this one as well. Rafa keeps it at the back of the scrum and goes for Bosworth. That's a nice tackle from Bria Napier. Fisher finds his captain who changes direction and goes the other way. And he's through. He's nearly through. Recycled. And that's a massive tackle from Tom Elphick. It looks like he's also got cramp. Crapper goes from the back of the rook. Fitzsimmons supported well. Burton into contact and that's out of play. Much to the delight of the Uni of Sheffield supporters. Thrown out of play and we've got more players down with cramp. As Harry O'Brien comes off. The prop clutching his shoulder. Let's hope he's okay. Ben Ross comes on. And Robert Adamson also comes on. So a couple of changes in the front row for uni. I'm proposer talking to his team. Cam Dunn, the captain, has also come off. So a whole new front row. That sounds like it's going to be interesting. A fresh front row for the last minutes here at Hallam Sports Park. So Adamson to take the throw then. He finds his man, but the referee deems it not straight. So the first throw for the new sub hasn't quite gone to plan. Scrum down again. Inside the 22. Hallam attackers poised and ready. Straight down, free kick from the scrum. Tapped quickly by Crapper. He goes for Bosworth, he brings him down. Gets over the gain line. Fitzsimmons now. Creeping closer here, Sheffield Hallam. That's well met in the midfield. Joel Gunn brought down by Lakeman Brown. Burton, Pryor, Fitzsimmons, good tackle again by Licence, and a penalty. Rolling on the floor, and a penalty to Sheffield, Sheffield Uni. Bosworth with the kick. Finds touch, a little bit of ground made. Chance to attack as well from the line out. How do you feel about these last minutes coming? It's gonna be close, it's gonna be tense. It feels on a knife edge. It's really hard to, get, to hard guess. Hard to predict how what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's exactly. We've been in this half for a while now. <laughs> Decisions keep going to either team. 
You need to take that line out. Just. License. Had a good game. Goes into contact once more. And a penalty to Uni of Sheffield. Might relieve a bit of the pressure as they can get even further up the field. Uni look like they're going to make another sub as Bosworth doesn't find touch. He'll chase it. Baker, the captain, collects. Hallam scramble men back. Pryor, first receiver, met by license. Peel off. Could be a turnover. The referee waves play on. Cooper. 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 All the way. And he's knocked it on. And Buckworth will look to attack. Counter is on. Can Uni get it through? Not quite. And we will come back for the initial knock on. All from a misjudged kick, but you needed well to sort of protect themselves there. And we've got another man down, so. Stoppage in play. Three points in it. Twenty one eighteen. As we enter the final. Stages of this tightly contested game. Adamson goes off again. Captain Dunn is back on. More changes. Like Tom Logan is going to come on. Quite a long stoppage here, do apologize. Just about to get restarted from the scrum. Long stoppage in play while teams organised their subs and dealt with injuries. Napier's back up, having had his cramp dealt with, and he'll feed into this scrum. As it angles slightly. Buckworth penalty. Penalty to Hallam, not dri uh, penalty to Uni, not driving straight. Another opportunity to get further up the pitch. Bosworth to take again. Goes flatter aerially. Henry Welton joins us on the pitch as Tom Elphick 
comes off try scorer of the first try. It's had a good game, solid scrummager as well. He makes way, and Henry Welpton joins us here at Sports Park. Another stoppage here. Knock on. Tom Logan joins us as well. He'll join in at the scrum. And Ali License will make way. So a couple of subs and a couple of fresh legs for Sheffield Uni. Shout of set from the referee. Callum scraped that ball back. Crapper struggling with it at the back. Fisher goes for the blind side against Rogan, Logan, sorry. And he's found touch as he clatters into the substitutes position over on the far side, which is luckily vacant. Four minutes to go, says the linesman. Still feels as though it's on a knife edge. Dunn to throw. Finds Buckwith again. That's been a popular combination. And the referee, with the decision, playing the arm in the air at the line out. That's a big decision as you need just seem to creep forward further and further with only a couple of minutes to go here. Touch is found by Bosworth. Kicking duties have been swapped. Done. Finds his man at the front again. Buckwith, it is. The arms out from the referee. At the back. Ferris. Buckwith recycles and goes himself with support. Leopard stumbles over the ball, but collects and drives. Gets. Forward, Logan, Ferris again, and the referee comes back from the penalty, not a lot happening in that phase, but I think Uni will just be content with their positioning on the field with just a couple of minutes to go. go for the corner once more. Interesting they haven't gone for the tee at all in this game. They go for the corner and they trust them all. not to go to the front. They find Leopard, and that's not straight. The wind took that, you can see it. And scrum down. Could be one of the last scrums. This could be decisive. 
and Hallam get the shove on that they need? Can they drive up the field? Couple of points in it with just a few moments to go here at Hallam Sports Park. They scrape it back, but the shove is on from Hallam Uni and it's a penalty. A scrum penalty for the University of Sheffield. Collapsed on this near side at the scrum under the pressure. It's great work from the front row. Deciding what they want to do. They go for the corner. Some mutters of T calling, but they go for the corner. Crowd cheering their team on. To the front, done to Buckworth. Initial halt on the mall. The drive slowly creeps forward. Done at the back, Napier, and the referee stops it. Latter phases of the game here. Hallam, if they're going to do something, they need to do it now. But I'm losing my word with all of that tension. The position that they're in on the pitch looks a tall order. Players crammed into their own touchline and try line. The substitutes rile up their fans. Support has been phenomenal this afternoon. The ball fed in. There's a big shove on. It's met. Fisher is caught and he's knocked it on. And the referee blows for full time. Joyous scenes as the players and supporters invade onto the pitch. Another closely contested game. What a performance. They drew it so closely again this year. But Sheffield Hallam just miss out once again. Impressive. Your thoughts, Mary? I'm impressed and I'm really happy about this game. I think everyone in the public enjoyed it as much as we did. Good to see players shaking hands, big oh, celebrations tonight. Well, obviously we couldn't get to the end of that game. <laughs> but I think Hallam will once again this year be impressed. They drew it so close, started so well, they were always, always in this game. They just couldn't get... Well, it makes an eight victory for Uni off this Eight year. victories, yeah. Just couldn't kind of get impressive. over the line. Very impressive. Great game. What a performance. What a game. What a varsity spectacle it was. Cheers and chanting. And smiles all around. Final score then here at Hallam Sports Park. Just the three points in it. Sheffield Uni, 21. Hallam, Sport, Hallam 18. We'll hand you back to the studio. Thanks there for our commentators. So that finished 18-21 to University of Sheffield, and that's the eighth year in the row that University of Sheffield have won. 
And really, what a battle that was. There were some big hits, hard tackles, and a close game. We couldn't have asked for much more, really. Just wanted to get your thoughts. Well, it was, it was a great, great game and a great second half. I think the weather probably affected how they played. Um, but for Uniov to, to keep hold of their lead, especially being a man down with the red card, going against the wind, it was a, it was a really impressive, impressive second half performance. Yeah, 100%. We're going to get onto the red card just in a second. But yeah, Murphy, what's your thoughts? Yeah, it, was a, it was a good exhibit of varsity rugby. A couple of mistakes but from both teams and a, a couple of special moments from either team as well. The weather had no real benefit to either team. It was just a bit of a craziness out there. But it was a great, great exhibit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're now going to come to the red card, as, as I said, but, you know, with, with that, when, whilst, whilst we were watching, we couldn't really work out straight away what it was. So the lineman must have a good eye, and we watched it back. And, Jack, would you like to explain what, what the red card, or what you think the red card was, was for? Well, what we could see, uh, looking back at the stream, actually, was, was the Uniov player kind of leaving his leg in into a Hallam player's face uh, at, a bottom, at the bottom of a ruck, almost uh, maybe Beckham-esque, maybe, but... Uh, <laughs> It, it was. Uh, it looks slightly deliberate. I don't know. Maybe he should. Maybe um, you know, speak for himself. But uh, it, it didn't look. Didn't look good, and it didn't put uh, Uniov in the best position, especially just uh, holding on to such a such a small lead. Yeah. And Murphy, do you think the red card had had an impact on the game? You know, because well, University of Sheffield were ahead, yeah, and sure. and they still won the game. But you know, what impact did the red card have on the game? Yeah. One of one of the players, uh, the player who received the red card, Charlie uh, Flinders, I think. He's, he's an experienced player in that squad and he, w he will have been leading the squad throughout the whole first half. And it's just a shame that for the whole team, uh, their momentum and their morale when someone gets a red card, especially one that's a little bit uh, umming and ahhing, whether it's a yellow or a red, but it, it just lowers the tone of everyone in the squad. And they did really well to pick themselves up and keep going. For that. And for Flinders, he's, he's one of the more experienced men in the side as well. I think he plays for um, the Sheffield men's RUFC team. And they brought him in for the game, especially. And it's, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just confusing when you have someone who's of that calibre making a silly mistake like that. But that's the that was the game today. It was full of mistakes like that, and that was no shortfall for either side. I mean, we're not going to dwell on it too much because no. um, you know we want to focus on the pos positives. Really, we want to focus on the fact that University of Sheffield have won. You know, and con condolences as well for for Hallam. Uh, you know, it was, it was a, hard, a really hard fought battle. Um, but when it came down to when it came down to the game and just really getting stuck in, I think, you know, University of Sheff Sheffield were there. Well, I think they were mighty impressive that second half, especially being a man down. And there was a good, good uh, few phases of play where um, Hallam were in their own half, really going at the defensive line. And I think they really showed a sort of valiant defensive display, not only defending their lead for this game, but also defending their seven-year streak at that point. So, uh, no, it was really impressive. And uh, Hallam was so close. They had an incident mm. in the corner here where they, where it looked like to us they dropped, knocked the ball over the line when they could have scored, you know, how things could be so different uh, if, if maybe the conditions were slightly different and people could hold on to the ball just a little bit tighter. And what impact did conditions have, you know, overall today? Because we talked about this at the... Um, at half time, you know, about the, about the wind. But really, the second half, wind was in the favour of Hallam. Yeah, the, the wind should have really helped them out, but it was, it was hailing, it was sunny, it was cloudy, it was windy. Everything, everything had a real impact on the game, really. But it's, it's almost like the Uniob have a hold over, Chef, uh, over Hallam because it's, it's been eight years since they've got a win, and despite the previous form of Uniob being like second bottom in their league, and uh, Hallam having some really good players. It's, it's almost like they have a spell over Hallam and they just can't escape it. And it also came down to the last few minutes of, of um, Unios domination at the break, at set piece again. You know, you saw multiple line outs, uh, scrums, they hold their nerve, they kept the composure, uh, where they quite easily could have, could have uh, struggled in those last, last few minutes, especially with a man down. You know, the fatigue was there, the sun was starting to go out. You know, I bet I didn't probably favour the forwards, but uh, no, it was a really impressive display. And, uh, but you have to say, Hallam as well did look impressive. Uh, and um, you just think maybe the conditions today didn't suit their play style, but another day they probably could have come out with the win. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was quite an unlucky day for, for Hallam, really. And I think. I, I look forward to seeing what they can do next year as well. I think after, after eight years, I think that they, they, could, they can come back on, on the ninth year next, next year and, and fight back. But we're going to come back and go over to Jed, who's uh, down, on, down on the pitch. About your reactions to that game? 
Yeah, so it was a really good game today. We came into it as underdogs, not expecting to win, having a pretty tough season actually, but then what we worked on in training came together and it all seemed to work out in the end for us. Yeah, I mean, we know the reputation that precedes us that we've not lost this game in seven years and as Cam said, we've not had the greatest season, but to come into this game, we've been building up for this for months and it's been bubbling away. And I'm just so unbelievably proud of every single boy on that pitch because they really dug deep there and it was hard out there. We knew it was going to be hard. But we, but we really dug deep, and I'm so, so proud. It certainly got harder when the, after the red card. How did you try and rally the troops after that one? We just had to make sure that we knew where we were ahead, so we had to make sure that the boys stayed calm, stayed comp compassionate, and make sure we kept going. It, we, we're a system-based team, so we know if we get our simples right, if, we go, if, if stuff goes wrong, if it goes to the fan, if we go back to our basic structures, then we'll be all right. That, that'll take us to the end. And credit to Cammy, you know, he led us out there unbelievably. And every other lad out there, I mean, I could name any of them. They're all putting shots in and really working hard for each other now. Yeah, so, so proud. How would you sum up the season as a whole then? Uh, overall, I'd just say proud. That's the way i describe it. Um, tasted really bad, but there's a really nice aftertaste with it now. That's the best <laughs> I can come up with right now, sorry. But yeah, hopefully you can do something with that. Brilliant, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, Enjoy you your much. evening. And there we go. University of Sheffield absolutely thrilled with the victory today. Back to you guys upstairs.